Hi guys, I'm Tyler Lawnen, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I'm recording this on Friday, April 22nd at around 1230 Eastern Time. Uh, so market is down again today. You know, kind of the week, it started off okay. We got through the Netflix debacle. Through Wednesday, the market was on track to be up for the week. And then Thursday, we opened higher. Just started drifting lower from there throughout the entire day. Uh, continuing through Jerome Powell's comments, indicating potential 50 basis point hike on the table for May. Not a huge surprise, but kind of the bottom line is that the rallies continue to be sold. Um, it's just it's just one of those markets where there's not really a lot of direction, and so it's hard to build any momentum. Um, typically means good good time to remain cautious, uh, take smaller positions. You know, don't get don't get too caught up in things. Step back from stocks that aren't acting well, that kind of thing. On the other hand, you know, it is earnings season, so there's a lot of excitement, potential excitement about what we might hear from companies. We're going to get at it again next week. We're going to get deeper into earnings season. Um, I'm excited to hear from a lot of med tech and biotech companies. And then, of course, next week we have the mega cap tech stocks, including Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. Those are sure to be closely watched reports. Um, but that's next week. We get into the following week. We get into many more software names. High growth software names have been, as you know, pretty beaten up. Um, so we will be looking for signs of life there. Um, but we're not talking about that stuff today. What I really want to get into are uh, some small and mid cap banking stocks. I know it's not the most exciting area out there, um, but with interest rates going up and, and poised to go up higher, some of these names have exposure. Uh, really nice leverage to rising interest rates, and there's some other things going on. Um, so let's get into that. Uh, we also have banking stocks trading at a discount to the market, and so um, you know another reason to be to be taking a spin through the space. We're going to start off here with Metropolitan Bank, a small cap name. Uh, ticker symbol is MCB. Market cap is about one billion. You can see they reported couple of days ago stocks down the last two days you know pretty much everything is but overall the trend line here is decent above the 200 day moving average line so in terms of what they do northeast focused bank it's a commercial bank they also have a global payments group that provides financing um or i'm sorry banking as a service to fintech and crypto companies it does not do any lending to those clients both businesses are growing, and in the first quarter, everything, pretty much everything looked good. Um, took a spin through the earnings report. Loans were up, deposits were up, fee income in the global payments group was up. Credit metrics remained strong. Looked through analyst reports. Most of the analysts that, comp that follow the company, that follow the bank, continue to think it should do well. Um, so it seems like an interesting name to me. Uh, I like that it's smaller. Uh, and that, you know, again, credit metrics remain good and, and most of the business is doing pretty well. So that's Metropolitan Bank. Next up is Trinity. So Trinity Group is, this isn't actually a bank, it's a business development company. So what they do is they provide venture debt and equipment financing to high growth companies. So a few of the names that they have backed in the past are Quip, Autonomy, uh, Impossible Foods and Lucid Motors. It's kind of an income story. Uh, yield this year should be well above 7%. Uh, when you throw in special dividends, it, it might get up quite a bit higher than that. Um, as you can see, the trend line here has been up. The stock has been doing relatively well. You know, it's not to say there's not some volatility here. Um, but again, for sort of a small cap, business development company, you should expect some volatility, uh, but it is an income story. And when you get into it, there's some compelling stuff going on. So high level, obviously, you know, if you're going to get into this, do some digging because it is a BDC, they will issue a 1099. So you would want to be aware of that. Moving on to Silvergate Capital, ticker symbol here is SI. So a small cap bank market cap of just over 4 billion. So Silver Bank, uh, it's a commercial bank, so they provide services to the digital currency industry. They have 
a global payments platform called the SEN network, S-E-N. They also provide loans, collateralized loans that are backed by Bitcoin. Uh, they've recently made a significant one to MicroStrategy. And they also are working on a stablecoin offering, which is expected to launch later this year. Although I would have to say that, you know, the regulatory environment around stablecoins is still something to be worked out. It's pretty murky. But Silvergate is the company that backed, that bought the um, the stablecoin assets uh, from Facebook, the DM. And so they have that, that they're wrapping into their stablecoin initiative. The stock offers a way for investors to gain exposure to rising interest rates. Basically, their deposit base has very, 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 very low costs. Crypto uh, economy customers are using those deposits for trading, not earning income. Um, in the first quarter, which was just reported this week, you can see the stock did well in the couple of days afterwards. It's up, you know, it's bucking the trend today. It's up over 1%. Um, you know, obviously there's not a huge trend line here, but uh, stock has been relatively stable. Management gave a pretty nice outlook. They're continuing to see upside from rising interest rates. Um, and again, when we look through analyst reports, it's a generally well-liked name. Uh, if you want exposure to the crypto economy through a banking, a regulated banking institution, Silvergate is one of the few ways to get that. Uh, if you don't want that exposure, then, you know, Clearly, you do not want anything to do with this stock. All right. Lastly, uh, SVB Financial Group, Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, company has, you know, bank's been around for a while. I'm sure many of you know the name. Um, but I'm featuring it today because uh, they recently reported stock is up nicely today, up over 10%. That's definitely something to celebrate. Uh, when the broad market is down one and a half to two percent. So what they are, um, high tech commercial bank based in Silicon Valley, they fund startups. So they offer a lot of exposure to the tech and life sciences sectors. Uh, JP Morgan has been following the company for over a decade. Their report uh, after earnings indicated they think this may be one of the best buying opportunities that they've seen since they've been following the stock. A couple of the reasons why uh, so activity has been depressed for VC and private equity companies, uh, for firms for the last couple of quarters. JP Morgan says they see over $3 trillion sitting on the sidelines. Uh, SVB is in a pretty good position to provide lending to a group of companies that are often perceived as risky, but often, you know, in reality, their types of clients have limited borrowing, borrowing needs, uh, and carry high cash balances. So they see... SVB is being a potential beneficiary of bringing in some of that money that's sitting on the sidelines. They say it has a terrifically strong balance sheet uh, and the underlying business is, is definitely cranking. They also have a lot of exposure to rising interest rates. That's all partly why you see the stock up today. Uh, and, you know, if you believe as JP Morgan does that SVB, uh, once in a decade buying opportunity, then definitely something to pay attention to. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, hopefully next week we'll have more positive news on the market after another big week of earnings. But in the nearer term, I hope you have a nice weekend and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.